never seen the sun. Hello, I'm Patricia Bras. Welcome to Passion Time. I'm here with a dear friend an extraordinary bilingual journalist, publisher, author. And today we're going to talk about one of her books, uh, The Water That Rocks the Silence. Silence. I love that title. And she's won two major awards for this book, the International Book Award, Latino Book Award, and also the Carlos Montemayor Award, many more than that. But uh, we're here to discuss this book because it has a lot to do with being an immigrant and living through wars. So thank you so much for joining us, Rosemary. Thank you, Patti, for having me here. Thank you. <laughs> so Rosemary, what is your passion and how are you living your passion? Well, my passion is, is all about expression, about words, about uh, the uh, creative process of, of how an idea have, uh, can become a reality through words. Um, very much into uh, the creative uh, process of a person and, and uh, how when they conceive an idea, it can become a reality. The water that rocks the silence deals with young people, deals with children and war. What is it, and it happened, it takes place in Lebanon, right. which is a very war-ravaged country, unfortunately. Um, tell me why you picked not only the country, but also the children to tell your story. Well, it, you know, it's a very interesting question because, um, you know, my grandparents, as, as you know, they, they all, of, all of them were born in Lebanon. So I'm a second generation Lebanese. And um, my daughter, uh, at that time uh, when, when the, this all happened, she um, asked me to uh, go to Lebanon for a, for a trip for a summer. This was right. summertime, yeah. just a trip with uh, her friends sure. and... Uh, you know, um, and I said, you know what? Yeah, you can go, and uh, because I know, I knew the the friend, and I knew the mom, and yeah, so you trusted them. Ex exactly. So she she left to to Lebanon, and she was around 16, 19 years, um, 16, 17 years old, more or less. So uh, when she came back, uh, the the uh, second day she came back, when she was back, the uh, war between Israel and Lebanon started. Yeah. So it really hit me. It hit me really bad because I thought. This could have uh, happened uh, to us. I mean, war could have happened to, to us. Yeah. We, she was there. Uh, she was, you know, uh, driving from here to there. She was with her friend, the family, and suddenly, you know, the, two days after she was back, war s started, yeah. and uh, people were dying. The first thing that that uh, uh, was bombarded was the uh, airport, uh, the ports, uh, the roads. Uh, so the country was paralyzed. And just just the idea having my daughter, you know, there, in a yeah. war zone, it yeah. was it was so bad, uh, and it also hit my husband. And we were talking all back and forth all the time. What would have done if she would would have she been, been there, yeah? Uh, what and you know we were fantasizing about we were being hired in a, um, a helicopter and you know all those things. What would we have done to get her Exactly, out of there, right? exactly. Like, whatever, yeah. Whatever, I mean, you, you do whatever. Your you, child, yeah. Exactly, and, uh, but then we ended up thinking, well, we could have, uh, have done anything because she was trapped there because she would have been trapped there because the, the roads, the airports, Everything's everything close, wasn't, yeah. yeah. So, so tell me, you know, I know the book features children and war. Tell me what the story is about. Well, the, the story of the book is composed of, of uh, 16 short stories. They are interconnected uh, between each other, uh, making the book um, uh, become like an, a hybrid book in the sense that it can be read as a short novel or as a, a, a book of short stories. So every short story is connected with the, with the next one and the next one. So you can even start from the middle of the book, from the end of the book or the beginning of the book, and the book will, be, will tell you exactly the same story. So it doesn't matter uh, where, where you, you start because uh, the characters are, most of them are the same. And, uh, and, and what, what we, I'm doing through the book is I'm following all these young uh, um, teenagers and uh, to see what they think about war, what they are uh, creating in their minds so they can uh, kind of uh, tell themselves what, what's really going on in reality. What do they understand and how did you find out what they would be thinking um, about the war? Because, I, you know, I, I put myself in the shoes of my daughter. 
And uh, the first thing that I thought, how on earth she was going to find out that, you know, she wasn't, uh, you know, she was going through war. Because she doesn't know, I mean, she has not been there. She, uh, this is a new phenomenon to her. So, of course, I mean, on one side you can say, well, it's so easy, you hear a bomb exploding and that's it. But then you hear the bomb, the bomb exploding and what is it exactly? Is it, is it a thunderstorm? Is it someone hitting someone else? Something fell apart? Or is it really a, a war? So sometimes when you don't know what is going on, you can, I mean, it takes you time to understand what's happening in reality. Did you find out that <clears throat> kids or children through your book see war differently than an adult would see it? Yeah, that's what I found out that, um, well, some of them, it, it depends, of course, of uh, each of the characters, but, but most, well, some of them, they will think that everything, I mean, something is, um, something funny is going on, or, or is it, is it, is it, uh, is it raining? You know, that's how, it, actually, that's they how the book yeah, starts. They, they, yeah. they, they don't have any clue. Exactly. Exactly. Okay, so why do it's you like, you know, this, this movie, I, I don't, I'm not sure if you remember it, uh, What the Bleak Do We Know? What the Bleak Do We Know, yes. And they were talking, when you don't have an idea what's happening, uh, it takes you time to realize, sometimes you don't, you, don't, you don't even have the vocabulary to describe what's, what's going on. Let me ask you this, because, you know, the book is, is quite, um, it's been one of the top books in this year. Tell me what is it about, do you think, about the book that attracts people to read it? Um, what are some of the universal truths in the book? Well, the, 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 yeah, but the book has many layers. There are many universal truths. Uh, I was trying to load every single word that I was using in the sense that I wanted the, 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 every short story, every chapter of the book to have all these meanings. And uh, th these meanings have to deal with, with justice, have to deal with violence, have to um, deal with, with religion, uh, uh, have to deal with how we treat women uh, in the Middle East. So, uh, you know, uh, this, this, while you're reading a, a, book, a book about, you know, what's uh, going on with war, at the same time, you are seeing that, you know, these teenagers are you know, awakening to sexu sexuality, and uh, you know, or or they are dealing with their religion and why they are not allowed to go out with their friends right. just because they are Muslims or just because Christian they are Christians. Yeah. Exactly. Um, as you're writing, you're writing fiction. As you're writing, does the story come to you, or do you have the story in your head before you start writing? The the, uh, the story comes to me, and at the very beginning, uh, you know, I, I thought that I was a fake writer just by the fact that I didn't have a plan. Right, right. And, uh, no and outline. Exactly, right. no outline. And every, every single writing school, every single program of uh, creative writing, they will tell you you have to have a plan. And right. then I, 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 I don't. I don't have a plan. And, and uh, so when I came to terms with, with that creative process, I decided, you know, this is, this is how I write. I'll just, you know, be in peace with it and keep writing yeah. because things were coming to your head. Right, as right. You were doing it. Mm -hmm. um, where do you go from here? Are you working on another book right now? Yeah, I'm working on a novel. And, is it uh, a fiction novel? Is yeah, it is. Can you tell us a little bit about? What's uh, it, what's not, about? not right not, not now. Yet. Not, not yet. Not yet. Not, not yet. Well, thank you, <laughs> Rosemary Salum. You are the publisher of uh, Literal Publishing. Um, you've met a lot of great writers. I just want to ask you one last question. What was the most interesting interview for you in your career, and why? Um, I, I have I have had uh, many many interviews, but uh, I think uh, one of one that I had with a journalist uh, in in Mexico, and uh, you know she was asking me about about oh, why all the time I was including water in my in my fiction oh, writing, interesting. and it was very interesting because at that moment I felt like you know, that I was failing that test or something because, you know, sometimes yeah, when you're writing, it, yeah, yeah you, you have so many unconscious uh, uh, thoughts that are going on that you don't realize about those things. Uh, so I, at that moment, it was the first time that I realized I was always using water in my writing. And, uh, you know, to this moment is, uh, you know, I don't, I'm... You don't really know. You and, yeah. and the, t the titles, I'm going to ask you the title of right. Rocks of Silence, why? Uh, because, uh, because I felt the impotence of uh, the um, international community, how they didn't 
he, they didn't intervene in the right way when this war was happening. And a lot of kids died at that war. A lot of kids, like almost 30% of the uh, people who died were kids. Except with the Syrian war. Exactly. Well, you know, and, and that's very interesting that you're mentioning that because this book can also apply to Syria. Any yeah, to any war. Any war. Because, uh, you know, the international community hardly says something. Uh, of course, they want to respect the sovereignty and they want to respect all these... Um, yeah, they don't mind selling arms. Right? Exactly, exactly. <laughs> we'll respect your sovereignty, but we can sell you weapons. <laughs> all right, well, Rosemary Saloum, the name of the book is The Rock That... The, the, the Water the That water. Rocks the Silence. And I, I need to mention that my dearest friend, uh, Catherine Mayo, she was the one who translated it into English. There you go. So the, the, the book was written in Spanish, but now it is translated in English and you can find it all over, um, so check it out. Thank you so much for joining us, and uh, please subscribe to our channel, and we'll see you next time. Para, para Venezuela. Un poquito de... Yo te mando la... Te voy después.